Hello and welcome to the filtering results video. So we're going to get started. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to open up our internet browser and we have a couple of different options here. So we can either use the library.clerk.edu option. So we would just be plugging in the web address be kind of a quicker way to get into library resources. Um, so rather quick. Um, we also can go through our My Clerk. So if we are looking at our My Clerk, we could also scroll to the bottom or um, possibly maybe it's not at the bottom, but what you are looking for is academic resources. So wherever, wherever you see that card, um, is where you're going to go. So academic resources and then you're going to click on where it says library. Either option that you take, whether you plug in the library.clerk.edu or if you do the my clerk option, it's going to land you in the same place. So this is the library's kind of website and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about filtering results. So we need to utilize a database to do that. So we're going to first just click on databases. I'm going to utilize a database that is called Sport Discus. And obviously this is just an example. This is just to give you kind of the idea of what you're going to be looking for when you're trying to filter your results. So we're really just looking for kind of some specific functions. So let's say that I am researching sport um, sport injuries. That is kind of a bit more of like a basic topic, but that's totally okay. So what I'm going to do first is um, something that, you know, you're going to be practicing um, really in any search that you do, and that is looking for ways of like refining and filtering your results. So one of the ways that I can do that is if I go over to the left, uh, and I feel like you're going to be seeing that a lot. It's always over on the left. Um, I'm going to look for where it says limit to, and there's a few different options that are kind of listed here. So the first option is something called full text. So essentially to explain full text is to kind of talk about access. So if we look at the results that we have on the page, you can see that a lot of them have this little option kind of with the journal article that says PDF full text. What that means is that essentially these articles that have that, you can find them in full text in this database. So um, it is, this just means that this is by far the easiest articles to get. So these are the easiest ones for you to find because in order to access them, all you will do is you will click on where it says PDF full text. And what happens then is it's going to give you like the article viewer. Um, so essentially you can click on this and you will automatically have an article. So from here, what I could do if I was interested in this article is I might print it. Um, I might download it. I might even just, you know, skim through it. I might read different parts of it. I might read the abstract. I might look at the keywords. I might skip ahead and look at the lit review. Um, I might look to see like what kinds of tables and charts there are. Uh, I might look to see how long the article is. Anything that might help me have a better idea of what that I'm going to be finding in this article and how useful that it is going to be for me. I might even take a look at the references. So any of the things that you're going to be doing with the article is much easier when it's full text. The other thing that I'll also just mention is that when we're looking at the articles in this kind of view, one of the options that we have um, over on the right side is something called the permalink. So it's actually the last option in this list over here on the right side. Um, you have a bunch of different icons. This one is the last one in the in the list. Um, looks kind of like a chain link um, that's kind of put together. So that's the permalink. Essentially what it does is it's going to allow for us to access the article. So let's say that we, we didn't download the article. Um, maybe we, we just don't want to. Um, maybe we don't want to print it. What you could do is you can take and click this little chain link. It's going to give you a link that you can then use to access the article again. Um, so you could utilize this link in lieu of 
um, printing it or um, downloading it if you wanted to. There's also options for citing um, and printing and emailing over there also on the side. So besides full text, one of the other things that you might do um, or that I would recommend you do is to make sure that you filter by peer reviewed. So your peer reviewed stuff is going to be the highest quality journal articles that you're finding. So these things have gone through the peer review process. Um, they have been um, read and vetted by experts in the field. So in the case of looking at these articles about sports injuries, we're seeing a lot of articles that are related to um, medicine, uh, physical activity. Uh, we might even see some articles that are specifically on things like physical education, um, clinical sports psychology, uh, rehabilitation. So it's a probably a pretty good bet that the experts in the field in regard to things like sports injuries are people who would be kind of the most knowledgeable about that. So it might be athletic trainers, it might be medical professionals, um, maybe people who would be treating an athlete who had the particular injury. So those are really going to be the people that um, are going to know the most. And obviously that's why the peer review process is, is so important is because everybody vetting that article and saying, yes, this is a good article. This is a good quality article. Um, the data that they are using makes sense. They are making good arguments. They're not, they're not just telling opinions. They're not just like sharing what what they personally think, but they are backing everything they are saying up with, with evidence from the field. So these are the things that we're looking for um, when we talk about like high quality journal articles. We want to find the best of. So in order to do that, we utilize some of these different ways of filtering. So, and also one of the nice things about a lot of the databases is as we would like to filter, the option updates uh, our results. So if I click on full text, it's going to update and it's going to kick out anything that is not full text. If I click on peer reviewed, it's going to kick out anything that's not peer reviewed. So in one way, it gives us better quality things to be looking at, but it also makes sure that the things that we are seeing would be things that we could utilize as part of our research. Um, one of the other filters that you might do as well is looking at publication date. So in a lot of different fields, the publication date really matters. So for example, in medicine, the publication date is really important because we know that medicine uh, changes. Things are, they don't stay the same. So we, in doing our research, may not want to, you know, cite something that's like no longer true. So like, for example, we don't want to um, cite an article that says, well, you know, uh, 50 years ago, we treated this disease by doing this particular thing. Um, if that's not still the case, if we, if that's just a historical piece, and we no longer treat that disease using that method, but we use more modern methods, then we want to show that. We want to cite material that is relevant, um, that is accurate, that is kind of taking into account the the time in which that it was kind of published. And especially when we're talking about uh, medical research, what you're also looking at is a lot of times in medical research, there's been actual uh, studies that have been done. So you're looking at, you want to be looking at the most current studies um, for the research that you're doing rather than citing things um, that are maybe from the past, unless are specifically looking at in relation to your research at like the historical process of it. So if within your research paper or your presentation, you are specifically going to be talking about how things have changed, then obviously it would make sense to account for kind of the past coming into the present and the future. Um, but if you are focused on kind of the right now and what's being done within the field of sports injuries, you would not 
be citing something that's from 20 years ago, but you're going to keep it more within, you know, 10 years, eight years, five years. Um, industry standard for the most part is 10 years, but sometimes you can sit inside of that. So that's just another way to filter your results. Um, and also you can even do things like if you look further down the list, there's options for source type. So if you just wanted to look at academic journals, uh, if you need to filter for language, you can do that as well. Um, and that just gives you kind of better ways of looking kind of for materials. So with that publication date, um, what you're going to do if you need to adjust for that, um, you can either do it manually or there's even this like nice like slider bar. Um, not every database will have kind of the same function, but you should see something for um, publication date. You should see something for full text. You should see something for peer reviewed, though it may not be exactly the same. Um, and if you have questions about any of this and would like further assistance, please reach out and let us know.